flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Keyes. Here. Ms. Philippe. Here. Mr. Haber. Here. Mr. Marty. Here. Ms. Tondro. Here. Mr. Mondeser. Here. Mr. McDermott. Here. Ms. Martin, would you announce the variance process to the audience? Good evening and welcome to the Board of Adjustment meeting. When your case is called, please come to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Staff will make its presentation to the board first, after which you will have an opportunity to address the board. Thank you. Um, anybody who is going to be speaking this evening uh, must take the quasi-judicial oath, which will be administered by our attorney, if you please rise. Please rise. Anyone wishing, desiring to speak this evening, uh, raise your right hand. Do you uh, swear or affirm that the testimony you provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Uh, we have no minutes to approve. Are there any communications? And any? I will direct that question to the board members. Any communications concerning any of the matters before you this evening? None? Okay. You may proceed, uh, Madam Chair. Does Thank that you. Does that include communications among board members speaking to anybody in the community or the applicants? Both. Any communications oh. you might have had. Okay. This time. None. Same. Okay. You may proceed. Okay. Um, no continued petitions. <coughs> we have a new petition, V912 Sunny Isles Eatery, 2050 Northeast 151st Street. Um, Mr. Mr. Galdos, I have a question for you before we start. And I'd like you to, this is a little bit unusual. This is the first time we have ever held a rehearing of a petition or variance and I would like to ask what authority we are doing this on okay your first concern um, it is um, my understanding that we this body and the Planning Commission have both reheard my items in the past um, it has not happened while I've been the council but it has happened in the past and your question pertaining to the rehearing tonight mm -hmm. it's based on uh, not particularly on the date chosen, but the reason we're here is because the city attorney has opined that at the last proceedings, this board did not articulate clearly uh, the conditions uh, that are required to be articulated under 3-606, and thereby there was a concern that the board did not properly follow its own code, and uh, which requires and I'll read the following. The Board of Adjustment shall find that the applicant has demonstrated compliance with at least four of the following six standards. This board, in voting uh, contrary to staff's recommendation, was to clearly articulate uh, which of those four, at least four of the six sections that were, or standards that were not uh, met by the applicant. Uh, in addition, the item that evening before this board was a waiver a waiver from the establishment as it relates to residential use. Uh, and the record uh, basically has little or no mention of the residential use. Instead, uh, the concern was whether or not there was an existence of a so-called quote unquote school, which is in reality an indoor recreational use. And that pretty much took over this board uh, and there was no consideration to the agenda, which was residential. And that's why we're here tonight, to clarify the record. Because last meeting, I'd, I'd just like to put something on the record that last, uh, when we heard this meeting, and you were asked if we could hear um, a special exception that was granted by the board, you said that these, proje these proceedings are quasi-judicial. Um, you made a decision and that's it. These proceedings are quasi-judicial. There is nothing in the code that allows you to rehear a matter again and again. It's just not there. It's just not there. But there's no authority to rehear a matter that was already done on the record with public notice. There are procedural safeguards here as a quasi-judicial hearing, which we have to abide by. 
we had a fair shot, the applicant had a fair shot, the decision was made, and now you have other decisions to make. There's nothing in the code. We do not have the authority to rehear it. That's all I'm saying. It's, n it's not that it's a bad idea. It's just where is the th authority? Um, we have new, we have a new ordinance. The ordinance clearly states in 3-703 that any person aggrieved by any decision or action taken under these LDRs by the Board of Adjustment may file a petition for writ of certiorari with the circuit court in accordance with the Florida Rules of Appellate Procedure. There is no authority anywhere that this be reheard. So I'm, my opinion is that this meeting is out of order and I'd like that on the record. Okay, um, if I may reiterate something to clarify your statement. Um, I believe there was a motion by one of your uh, board members mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to be specific, Michelle Garcia was the one that offered the motion. This board, mm -hmm does not have the authority to rehear on its own, and that's the court will use sua sponte. It does not have the authority to rehear a matter which already came before it. And so, so that- So why are we I hearing it tonight? Why are we hearing because this Because this was not a motion by you. This was not your motion. This is not, what I'm saying is that the, this board does not pick and choose what it's going to be in the agenda. That's up for city council. That's within the purview of city council, the city attorney, not it this it's board. It's not anymore because we have an ordinance that changed it, and if an applicant is turned down by this board, their remedy is to go to circuit court, well, you not to be reheard, uh, and not for I, I'm not an going attorney to belabor that advises our board to decide whether or not we want to pursue it in court. You cannot, on your own motion, uh, revisit. In this case, it was a special exception that was issued, I think, back in May. And the appeal, the time to appeal had already expired besides has, that. Has the applicant appealed this matter to the, appell to the appellate court? Uh, I haven't received an, uh, an appeal, no. Because they had 30 days from August 15th to appeal, and they have not. So if they have not appealed and we don't have an issue, <coughs> then why are we hearing that? Because of what I just said. The city attorney's office uh, has basically feels that the, the proper procedures were not followed by this bo uh, board uh, the last time around. Mm -hmm. So we're here to clarify the record. In, in rehearing, in hearing a matter that was not before you, I it's, it's definitely, you did not articulate under 3-606 the standards as to why you failed and you voted against the, the staff. That would, that would be up to a, in my opinion, it would be up to a court and our okay. attorney is making a judicial decision Oh, she's entitled to. Uh, okay. The charter entitles her. Uh, she is the legal advisor advisor to for the city to, to make the council. To contrary to our and, and code it, of ordinances. Well, it's, it, she made an, a decision okay. based on your decision last time around. And she is authorized to do so by charter. And by the way, the charter trumps the code. Okay. So well, I know we'll leave it at that. She is a charter officer. Okay, thank you. Um, so the applicant... Um, Mr. Cazzo, would you state your name and address for the record? It's uh, Jeff Cazzo. It's uh, 901 Ponce de Leon Boulevard, Coral Gables. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Staff, mm -hmm. you have recommended approval of the distance waiver variance. Um, right. As you notice, this time I, I separated and made it into two reports so it wasn't confusing. We have two issues here. So this, the first variance is a petition for variance to Chapter 3, Section 3-11 for a distance waiver for alcoholic beverage sales from a residential use, which is 873 feet from the subject property, where the required distance is 1,500 feet in the M1 district. Staff is recommending approval of the distance waiver variance with the following restrictions and conditions. That security is provided on all nights when music and entertainment is provided. For the first 90 days of operation, the there shall be two off-duty police officers <coughs> on all nights. After the first 90 days, there shall be two off-duty police officers on weekends, Friday night through Sat Monday morning, <coughs> and one off-duty police officer on all other nights. Furthermore, this arrangement will be evaluated by the city manager and the chief of police to determine if the level of security and security detail is sufficient for the establishment and the city reserves the right to make any modification to the security detail, whether by increasing or decreasing the level of security. 
Two, uh, the establishment shall not cause or create noise or other nuisances in the neighborhood. At a minimum, soundproofing of the building shall be provided. Three, the use of the establishment as an adult entertainment establishment, a gentleman's club, shall not cause directly or indirectly an upsurge in crime or police response incidents at or about the premises as determined by the City of North Miami Police Chief. Four, the establishment shall at no time be rented to or allowed use by a promoter of any kind for events wherein the general public is invited to attend. Five, the use of the establishment as a gentleman's club shall not cause directly or indirectly any activity deemed to be a threat to the public health, safety, comfort, order, appearance, morals, and general welfare and quality of life in the City of North Miami, as determined by the City of North Miami Police Chief. Six, the applicant shall arrange with the North Miami Police Department frequent random police service calls for narcotic sniffs. Seven, the operations on the site will be monitored by the North Miami Police Department and the Department of Community Planning and Development for compliance with these conditions and compliance with the City of North Miami's Code of Ordinances. Eight, the lease for the proposed off-site parking lot shall remain in effect so long as the adult entertainment use remains in operation. Some background information, uh, the applicant was granted a special exception use by the Board of Adjustment to allow an adult entertainment establishment on June 20th, 2012. Subsequently, on June 26, 2012, the City Council voted to allow adult entertainment establishments to serve alcoholic beverages. At the meeting of August 15, 2012, the Board of Adjustment granted a music and entertainment license to the applicant. The applicant is seeking a distance waiver for alcoholic beverage sales from a residential use as the site is 873 feet from the use. The proposed days and hours of operation by the applicant are Monday through Friday from 4 p.m. to 6 a.m and Saturday and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 6 a.m. And of course, the extended hours are the subject of the second variance. The applicant stated that the kitchen will be open for service during all days and hours of operation. The restaurant style menu will include appetizers, sandwiches, and entrees. Chapter 3, Section 3-11 states that unless a variance is obtained from the Board of Adjustment, no alcoholic beverage application shall be approved when the place of business does not satisfy the distance separation requirements of alcoholic beverage establishments from schools, houses of worship, city parks and recreation areas, residential uses, and similar uses. The required distance separation for adult entertainment businesses is 1,500 feet. The applicant is requesting a variance to the distance requirement because the proposed site is 873 feet from the property line of a residential use located at 14695 Northeast 18th Avenue, which is a large apartment complex. There are no schools, houses of worship, city parks and recreation areas, or similar uses within 1,500 feet of the proposed site. Article 3, Section 3-606 specifies the following standards for the granting of a variance and states that the Board of Adjustment shall find the applicant demonstrates compliance with four of the six as listed below. One, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not applicable to other land structures or buildings in the same zoning district. Uh, staff finds there are no conditions peculiar to the land structure or building. Two, the unusual circumstances or conditions necessitating the variance request are present in the neighborhood and are not unique to the property. Staff finds that the conditions necess necessitating the variance are not unique to this property in that no other property in the district would meet the distance requirement. The residential use in question is a large piece of property surrounded by industrial zone property. In fact, almost all of the property zoned for alcoholic beverage sales in the city 
would be in conflict with the 1500 foot distance requirement. Three, that the requested variance maintains the basic intent and purpose of the subject regulations, particularly as it affects the stability and appearance of the neighborhood. The distance waiver maintains the basic intent and purpose of the regulations by ensuring that an alcoholic beverage licensee does not locate where houses of worship, schools, parks, and residential uses are normally, are normally located or are clustered in a very close proximity. The residential development is unique in its location amongst industrial property. Additionally, staff finds that its distance of 873 feet is an adequate distance to serve as a buffer from the subject location. Four, the literal interpretation of the provisions of these LDRs would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same zoning district under the terms of these LDRs. Currently, there are no other similar uses in the M1 district. Although the district does permit, as a special exception use, adult entertainment uses, nightclubs, and bars, lounges, and taverns. However, the literal interpretation of the provisions would deprive the applicant <coughs> of rights, as the M1 district is the only district that permits an adult entertainment establishment, yet at the same time provides confines because of the residential uses within 1,500 feet of the entire district. Five, the variance requested is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land structure or building. The requested variance to allow a distance of 873 feet from a residential use where 1,500 feet is required is the minimum variance that will make possible the use of the property as a gentleman's club serving alcoholic beverages. Six, the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of these LDRs, and such variance will not be injurious to the area involved. The granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of Chapter 3, Section 3-14, which states that variances relating to the distance requirements may be granted upon application to the Board of Adjustment and which in fact have been granted to almost all other alcoholic beverage licensees in the city. Based on the above an analysis, <coughs> staff finds that at least four of the six standards for granting a variance have been met and therefore recommends approval of the distance waiver variance. Thank you. Mr. Cuzzo, would you like to speak first? <coughs> sure. Thank you very much, Madam <coughs> Chairwoman, <coughs> members of the board. I want to thank you all for taking the time to hear <coughs> this item this evening. Uh, I know that uh, you weren't scheduled for another meeting till October and uh, so you all had to come out here tonight so we thank you for that. Uh, I also want to thank the staff for the work that they've done, uh, for the counsel that they've given uh, and uh, finally I want to thank the city attorney's office. Um, you know, I don't want to go into uh, everything that, that's transpired but uh, one thing I do want to supplement Mr. Galdos's uh, comments are um, there was no final order uh, granted um, on this on the last uh, hearing otherwise we would have filed lawsuit uh, which we didn't um, and and the reason we didn't was because we had no final order to, to file so uh, in our view this is not a rehearing this is a continuation of the last hearing which uh, sort of got out of hand um, the last time because we were talking about a school that didn't exist so that's uh, that's our take on it this is not a rehearing um, but just a continuation of the last hearing this has been a long road for uh, my, ap my uh, clients, uh, the applicant. Uh, we obviously, uh, this is again the only place that we can be in the city. Uh, we came to you all before and you agreed to allow uh, a, an adult entertainment facility. This board made that decision. Uh, the council made the decision to allow alcohol use in that adult uh, facility. So neither of those items are here before us tonight. Uh, tonight, it's really the only issue uh, before you tonight is the issue that comes before you any time you have an establishment that sells alcohol for consumption, um, be it us or restaurant, uh, Hooters, whatever, uh, they have to come to before you and ask for um, a variance on a distance because your city is not large enough to meet the 1,500 feet uh, requirement. And based on the history, you have always granted <coughs> that variance. 
um, you know, the basis of our lawsuit, had we filed the lawsuit, would have been that there were considerations other than uh, the considerations you should have been looking at um, had the decision uh, been made to deny it. Um, you know, our client from the beginning, the theme has always been that we were going to work with the neighbors, that we were going to work with the city, and we've tried to do that. Um, just to go through the list of things that we've already agreed to, uh, we've agreed that there would be no sexually suggestive, suggestive names or signs on the property. Uh, we agreed uh, because we didn't want s children to see people entering this uh, establishment, we agreed to put a berm and, uh, <coughs> and foliage in front of the door so they couldn't even see anyone going in. We put a hedge, we agreed to put a hedge around the entire property so that uh, PBS, uh, the, the individuals who work at PBS, would not see people coming out of cars to go into the establishment. Uh, we agreed to provide lighting. We agreed to be closed from 7.30 to 3 p.m. because there was, it was the council's concern that we not be open during school hours. We've also agreed to have a police presence uh, for the very first six months, which can be extended by the, by the, uh, the mayor, I'm sorry, by the manager and the police, uh, the police chief uh, if they deem necessary. So we've done all of these things. Uh, but again, the adult nature of this establishment uh, has no bearing on uh, your decision tonight. Your decision tonight is basically if any uh, business was going to operate from that dis um, location uh, and was going to sell alcohol for consumption, would you allow it? And as I said, you've <coughs> always allowed it. Um, and we hope again tonight that uh, you make the decision to allow it um, again. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open public <coughs> hearing. Um, however, I believe a lot of people have come in since the uh, judicial oath was administered. So, um, Mr. Galdos, I would like you at this time to re-administer the oath to whoever Certainly. has an oath. Um, anyone that has not taken the oath that wishes to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. <coughs> Do you <laughs> you swear or affirm that the testimony you provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. You may be seated. Okay. I'm going to open the public hearing. Um, due to the nature, I would like to limit this, if possible, to, to three minutes per person. If um, So anybody wishing to speak, please come up. Uh, you're going to state your name and address for the record. Please speak into the microphone. <coughs> no? Good. Excuse me. Your name and address. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the uh, members of the board. Dennis Kerbel. Uh, I reside at 11540 North Bayshore Drive uh, in San Susi Estates. Um, I am greatly concerned about the procedural nature of how this application came back before you. I understand that they're trying to couch it as just a continuation or not a rehearing, but I've reviewed the transcript, and uh, I, although I wasn't at the last one, um, Everyone that left, everyone that was in the room last time thought that the decision was final, that it was over. They should have appealed. Um, there is no provision in your code that gives this board, as the, as the city attorney mentioned last time, that gives this board the opportunity uh, or, the, or the jurisdiction to have a rehearing on a quasi-judicial matter that's already been heard and decided. In fact, the new application can't be brought for a year. But on top of that, there is certainly no authority within the city code to give staff the authority to put something on for what they consider to be rehearing. You are completely without jurisdiction to hear this item um, because of that. On top of that, under the city code, this board's rules specify that it's a regular Wednesday meeting when this board can hear items unless this board decides otherwise. I'm not aware of any finding by this board to hold a special meeting on a Thursday on a date that was not already scheduled for a board meeting. Um, and so for that reason, also, this entire proceeding is completely infirm. They had their opportunity. All of the things that, these, that uh, your city attorney has mentioned that uh, they had concerns about the last proceeding were all things that the applicant could have raised in a timely filed cert petition to the circuit court. They failed to do so. They have waived their appeal. Any further appeal is, ju is jurisdictionally barred. And so therefore, as Madam Chair, as you, mentioned, as, as you recognized at the beginning of the hearing, this entire proceeding is completely without authority. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um. Good evening. My name is Steve Bass. I live at 2240 Arch Creek Drive. Um, 
in Keystone Point, North Miami. I am here as a resident of North Miami. I am here as the president of the Keystone Point Homeowners Association. I am here as the father of four children, three of which go to school four tenths of a mile from the proposed strip club site at David, uh, David Lawrence K-8 Center. And I'm, I'm here because my eight-year-old daughter, who just started third grade, is a student at the Gymnastics and Dance Academy where she and 300 other little girls uh, go for dance lessons only 350 feet, approximately 350 feet, from where they want to put a 20,000 uh, square foot strip club that will serve uh, liquor. I agree that the procedural point that you raised, uh, Madam Chair, was correct. This entire meeting is illegal for, for the three reasons the prior speaker uh, just disclosed. And it's rather shocking that the attorney's office is saying they can do rehearing when that very question was asked by one of the members of this board on August 15th in the opposite context. Hey, we granted a special exception to the applicant before we knew there were 300 little girls getting lessons 350 feet away. Can we rehear that? And the council said, no, it's quasi-judicial. There was a hearing. It ended. That was it. You have no authority to rehear it when it was, we want to take away something we gave them. But now, when it's the opposite context and they want to revisit, hey, you denied us something that was at a hearing on August 15th. We want a do-over. We're not happy. Now, the same law department has given you the opposite legal opinion. Now that they want to have a do-over and try again, now he says, yeah, rehearing is okay. It's in the transcript, clear as a bell. His, his opinion was exactly the opposite uh, the last time. And the other two points about this hearing being legal, because only this board has the authority to set a special meeting on a Thursday. And this board's last sunshine meeting was August 15th. I was present. There was no motion made to have a special meeting. So it's illegal for that second reason. And in your agenda, this is called a new petition. Right on the agenda, it says new petitions. Your code says you can't hear a substantially similar application on a variance when it's denied. You can't hear it for 12 months. It's been five weeks. The code is black and white, unambiguous. You cannot hear this again. For they can't file it again for uh, 12 months. And as to his argument that uh, suggesting that this is a continuation, that's not what your zoning staff has said. That's not what your uh, legal department has said. And that's certainly not what he said at the last hearing when he said, if you deny it, I'm going to take an appeal. And he threatened this board that he would take an appeal. And he had 30 days to file a petition for cert with the Circuit Court Appellate Division. That was his only remedy set forth in your code. And that deadline was last Friday, the 14th. And apparently they did not appeal. So the window has now closed. And to the extent he says, well, there was no final order, your counsel advised me that when there's a denial, there is no subsequent resolution or subsequent order. It's the practice of the legal department and this board on a denial that it's the decision and reflected in the minutes, or in this case, the transcript, because that's all there is. There's a verbatim transcript of what happened on uh, August 15th that reflects that their application for a distance variance lost. It was unsuccessful four to three for the reasons that were stated on the record. Only an appellate court has jurisdiction, has jurisdiction to set that aside. And what they're basically saying, or what the attorney is saying, is the propriety of your order is in doubt. That's not her call to make. We, That's what appellate courts are fall um, for. About 30 seconds, Mr. Bass, if you can. Getting to the merits, it's their burden to meet four of the six criteria that are expressly enumerated in the code. Their burden. They haven't met any of the six criteria. As to the first one, special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved. That criteria doesn't apply. They haven't mentioned any unique or special circumstances. The restriction on distance, you can't serve liquor in the M1 district within 1,500 feet of a residence. And here we have a 588 unit apartment building. That's not, that's not unique. That applies to all the M1 uh, businesses. The second criteria is the unusual circumstances and conditions necessitating the variance request are present in the neighborhood. Well, again, they haven't demonstrated that there are any unusual circumstances and conditions. So they haven't met their burden as to the second criteria either. The third criteria is that the requested variance maintains the basic intent and purpose of the subject regula uh, regulations, particularly as it affects the stability and appearance of the, of the city. Well, what they're seeking is exactly the opposite of the intent. The intent is we don't want 
establishments serving liquor within 1,500 feet of residences, or in this case, 588 residences. And they want to cut that back almost in half. So that's not consistent. So they clearly don't meet that one either. And the last three are, are even more, militate even more strongly against them. Four is the literal interpretation or the provisions of these LDRs would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other property owners in the same zoning district. Well, that's not, that's not true. The same restriction that's on them applies equally to every business in the M1 district. And the fifth and sixth, they don't meet either. Five, the variance requested Mr. is the Mr. minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land structure or building. They've Mr. stated Mr. on the record they will open without liquor, without liquor or not. And this was, this was pointed out by one of the former members of the board. So there's no, there's no harm there. They said they're going to open and they can use the building as, as they want to use it with liquor or not. And the, sixth, the last one is the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of these LDRs and such variance will not be injurious to the area involved. Mr. So Bess, I, I really I want to be fair to everybody, so you just... Madam Chair. No, please, um, <coughs> not taking comments from the audience. Mr. Allowing Mr. a 20,000-foot yes. strip club. If you're going club. to allow three minutes, yeah. it I has know, to I'm be I'm three I'm minutes to everybody. I agree. We're going over a little. Um, Mr. Best, can we finish well, it up? Well, um, there was a lot of legal... Uh, issues as to whether this hearing should happen at all given that you're not set on your regular day there was no motion by this board so about half my time had to deal with the unique legal infirmities the fact that this meeting shouldn't be happening that it's illegal the notice was in inadequate as as well as other people will say but the, in short it's their burden to meet four of these six criteria and i would submit they don't meet any and for that reason it was properly denied the last time in an order that is valid and has not been appealed and is now a final not appealable Thank order you. should should you reach the merits you should reach the identical uh conclusion you reached the last time which is denying the application thank you thank you <laughs> run over mr burns madam chairman kevin burns 2065 alamanda drive i'd like to know if i get eight and a half minutes to speak uh seven uh, thank you seven. <laughs> what is before you is a distance waiver there is no, don't let the emotions, don't let the kids, don't let all this clutter distract you from what the question is. The question is, are you going to give a, a variance on the distance? And as the city staff has said, not one business that sells alcohol in this city, whether you're a mom and pop convenience store, whether you are Jimmy's Diner or Royal Castle, if you want to sell beer, you got to get a variance. So. Yes, it's not unique to everybody, but everybody's got to get it. We just gave uh, a variance to a, a restaurant that serves alcohol. That's 100 feet from St. James Church. Mm -hmm. Folks, this is the only place that these type of establishments are allowed. And they're only allowed in certain areas, which we know is the M1 district, because that's where we, we don't want them on 125th Street. We don't want them in a lot of other areas. For those of you who may be in business, have restaurants, have whatever, you know how difficult it is to operate. Imagine operating in the warehouse district. If there was nobody to use this business, they'll go out of business. Obviously, these people are going to invest, invest two, three million dollars in the city of North Miami. That is a legal business, fully permitted and allowed. If you single out, and I think the city attorney's office was quite right, to single out and discuss for an hour and a half about whether something is a school when schools are not permitted in that zone for this exact reason, and then deny it, I think that's where the city attorney practiced what she's supposed to do is to give good legal advice. And if somebody wants to come up here tonight and spend their eight minutes or ten minutes to talk about why we're here, well, guess, folks, we are here. You are here to make a decision. It's based upon the city attorney's interpretation that you should be here to protect the city. And that's what you should do, protect the city's assets. Vote any way you want. But remember, not one business in this city could operate without that distance waiver. And yet this, these people are... 800 feet away or, or, or even more the other thing is let's make sure everybody in the audience understands what a gentleman's club and an adult club is 
It is where mommy and daddies can go to watch other people dance naked. If you don't want to see other people dancing naked, you don't go through the door and you don't visit it. But if you want to see mommies and daddies and other little uh, and other people uh, at there, you can go there because you're grown adults. I think it's shameful that people try to pull the little kid card and bring out, you know, protect the, the, uh, the kids. It's, it's an adult conversation. It's not appropriate for young kids to be talking or having these adult conversations that we are going to be having tonight and shame on their leaders. So you should, you should follow the rules of the city, do what they've done for the last 40 years, given every business that has asked for the distance variance, the right to to the, the, this adult entertainment club to have that. So I expect that the city attorney has given you sound advice. You're here tonight. They tried to schedule it for last night, but the charter board was here, and so it was moved to Thursday night, even though you are legally and it is on the city's books that you are scheduled every Wednesday of the month. But if you don't have any business, the city staff in their discretion is allowed to not have meetings every month if you don't have uh, any items. But when you do have items, the staff has the right to schedule it, but because there was a conflict last night with the charter board, this room wasn't available, and so that's why you're meeting this evening. So ladies and gentlemen of the Board of Adjustments, don't be persuaded by um, uh, emotions. It's what the rules say. It's what the rules apply to everybody. I'm not going to practice. I'm not going to go to that establishment, but I'm not going to tell my neighbor that they cannot go there. If you want sushi, go to a sushi place. You want Chinese food, you go there. You want to go see that, go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you because it's legally permitted in this city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Okay, um, people start coming up. Uh, seems we have a lot of people that want to speak, so let's. Helena Nanku, 565 Lakeview Drive, Miami Beach, Florida. He just said you're here to protect our city, so please protect us, because us, we are the future city, and building that is not really protecting us at all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we can hold the applause up. If, if you're going to come up, please line up. I don't want to have to wait like a minute for everybody to come up. If you're going to speak, please start queuing Hi. up. Marina Angleton, uh, 13,000 Arch Creek Terrace. I'm in Keystone Point. Two things. Number one, it might be contained in that strip club or whatever it is, but people have to get there. And it's not just mommies and daddies that go to these clubs. There are a lot of other people that go to these clubs, and they have to get there in their car. So don't think that it's just they're there, but think about how they have to get there. And you can build berms and do whatever you want, but they're going to be driving the streets near those kids. And the second thing is, I just would like a clarification. You said that there have been variances made for other, establish as other establishments for booze. But were the variances ever made for strip clubs? Are there any, is there any precedent for variances? Because you said there were variances made. We, 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 have, we have none because we don't have any strip clubs. Okay, so there were, you were saying that there's a precedent that was already made for variances for restaurants and such to have booze. So basically, though, there is no precedent because there has never been one granted for a strip club, correct? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll answer afterwards. We'll okay, thank you. This. Name and address, please. Natalia Perik, uh, 565 Lake U Drive. Uh, also the owner and the president of Miami Gymnastics and Dance Academy, 19th. Uh, 1975 Northeast 150th Street. I was already here before on the previous hearing. Unfortunately, um, as we already, let me first ask you, can you have more than three minutes since somebody I else was granted? Take about five minutes. Okay, that's what you are. Thank you. Know, you. Um, 
We were already talking about a lot of mistakes made by this city. Let me just point to another one. You guys already, this is, I believe, the third hearing, and all three times we were never informed or notified about this hearing. Neither me, nor the owner of the building, my landlord, nor the other business in the area. And actually, the owner is here. He will testify it by himself. Uh, if that's happened one time, I would believe, okay, by mistake, which actually was a kind of admitted last time. Oh, we kind of forgot there was Miami Gymnastics and Dance Academy. Okay, but this time, everybody clearly knew there is a gymnastics studio within 500 feet area. When today I called the city, I spoke to uh, Ms. Joel, and I, was, uh, I asked her the question, why we were not notified? The answer was, she actually admitted she, they didn't notify us on purpose, because we are not within 500 feet. I don't understand where this information was taken from, from because it's clearly we are we personally measured it we are within 360 feet from the property the, the answer was that they shouldn't measure from the parking lot i should measure from where they built the exact building again referring to the law the law doesn't say it should be from the building the law says it's from the boundary to the boundary Right? I didn't say the building. You said, said the building. The yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay. That's why All you right. told me it's not, it's not, my mm -hmm. measurement was wrong. Actually, in any mm -hmm. case, we are within 500 feet, and it's already the third time we are ignored. I don't know the reason why the city is hiding it. That's why the media is here. We want to bring it up to all the public. Let's find out why the city is hiding those meetings regarding this issue. Now, I think the reason of this rehearing we already discussed before is because we already see quite a few new faces here on the board. So I think these people just think that maybe they have better connections with the new members on the board today and they may vote in their favor. I'm sorry for my language, but I clearly see some corruption going on here, some discrimination going here against those little kids. I mean, guys, be ashamed. You have the little kids here standing up for them uh, for themselves, asking for the protection. They want safe environments. Those could be everybody was watching the Olympics. Those could be your future Olympics champions. You don't want to kill it right now. And ask the parents, you have the other parents too. Ask their opinion. What, what they will decide if that strip club will be here, how it's going to affect the morals of the kids. Those kids are, have pretty much healthy standards, standards for their morals, standards for their future. I, don't, I doubt any of them would, have to, would want to have such example next door. Again, referring to the gentleman who was talking here, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, when he said, you are guys here to protect the city. Let's protect the city. Families and children, this is your city. That's why we are here for. Let's protect the city. Yeah. And also, um, yeah, I another mean, 30 seconds. Another 30 yeah. seconds? Yeah. <coughs> uh, I mean, basically, I'm pretty done. I just wanted to, again, stress importance that we were not notified. So everything is a kind of hidden and not by, made by the law. And there is, by the way, no notice posted on the on the uh, promises of the future of the future club. They were supposed to put the sign. There was no sign either about today's meeting. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And State your name and address, please. I'll be quick. Uh, good That's afternoon, right. board. My name is Justin Susi. I live at uh, 13080 Coronado Drive, Keystone Point, North Miami. Um, the gentleman from um, Alamander Drive, he didn't mention his city, so I'm going to go ahead and assume he does not live in North Miami. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, if you happen to listen to him, he mentioned to our children as clutter. Um, so if you listen to his words and how he speaks referring to our children as clutter, I hope you don't uh, really take him seriously. Um, in addition to, uh, I was at the second viewing of the actual the ordinance and every single resident of North Miami that came up to speak was against this nightclub. Today, I feel confident every resident of North Miami will also be against it. In, in addition to, with the variance that you guys are talking about, we're not talking about a 100, yard, 100 feet, 200 feet. We're talking about almost half of the difference. Half of the difference. In addition to what the lawyer, Mr. Uh, Alejandro Drive, mentioned that you've done variances for every other establishment in North Miami mentioning restaurants. I don't know what restaurant the lawyer is going to, but in my experience, going to a restaurant and having a bottle of wine or a glass of wine, having a beer, is completely different than going to a strip club. When you go to a strip club, you are drinking and you're watching nude people dancing. I think you know what type of environment that creates. 
And so I think you need to be very specific on what we're talking about. We're not talking about a variance on a restaurant. We're not talking about a variance of a wine bar. We're talking about a variance on a very, very large strip club that is so incredibly close to an uh, uh, apartment complex and to this dance facility, which I just found out about. And finally, I'd also like to reiterate my complaints that I constantly have on these issues. That I just don't feel like our public is advised with sufficient time and proper notice. Again, I found out about this yesterday, and a lot of people have talked about how you weren't supposed to meet on a Thursday. So at least if you're going to make these exceptions and meet on days that you are not supposed to, that you properly advise your constituents so that they can be present to speak their minds. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jeffrey Lopez. I live on 1401 Miami Gardens Drive, and my daughter actually goes to the Miami Gymnastics and Dance Academy. I just want to add a little bit more because I, I don't see anybody talking about what would happen afterwards, but I've heard about the situation on 441 and Second Avenue in Tootsie's and on the other gentlemen's club. What has happened? Everybody starts getting drunk and they die because shooting comes about. The last one was that happened was on the gentlemen's club, uh, the, the new club over just over the bridge. It happened. Somebody got killed and they died in, in, uh, in public. Then the same thing happened on 441 Tootsie's, same thing. Somebody got, got, uh, got into a uh, fight with a bouncer, and same situation. Drunk people start shooting. We don't want this in our environment. We have children, and like the, uh, like the owner said, these people need to be protected right now because, yes, they are small, but in the future, they're the young prospect people from this nation, and we need to protect them at all times. Strip club is not something good. Why don't they open a strip club next to where they live? You know, I would like to see a strip club where they live. You know? <laughs> <coughs> I don't see they, they want to come when it's open let's go to their job okay then we could go visit maybe they'll throw in a bottle of wine over there for us for the gentlemen's club we don't want that here we want that away from our children thank you thank you and if anybody else please? good evening I'm Mr. Serban I'm the owner of the Highlight Building which is, uh, include the Miami Gymnastic I'm there for 1998 I remember like uh, 10 years ago, uh, one of the, my tenants subleased uh, for teenagers' party. So I just came around one night and I saw all the streets, all cars, we can almost go through the, the road. So I remember Mr. Shannon was at that time a chief of police, came over there and asked me if I can help them, so stop uh, sublisting. So I helped them in that time of city. Now, to became now city club, <laughs> right now, it's a, I think it's crazy. Somebody stupid think or something like that, you know, to very close. We worked so hard. We got so much peacefully. I'm there uh, first and last for the entire, uh, almost live over there. I got my cabinet shop. And I don't know what kind of violence because just across the street. Do you know, guys, uh, so there are churches, four churches. So where's the violence? There's four churches of the people which come every almost night of there. So how we can put now a strip club and a church together? I, I don't understand. Th I don't want to talk too much, but you know, it's uh, unusual. No, I, my, uh, I'm, night, I'm living in 1935 uh, Northeast, 150th Street. I never received a notice. Nobody, I, I was surprised because this gentleman over here tell me, hey, do you know it's a meeting at city? I never, nobody noticed me. I'm the owner from 1998. And I tried to build up and uh, put the things which uh, city of North Miami will be helped. Please okay. help us to keep quiet the city because the kids is here and there's future for the city. Thank you. <laughs> State your name and address, please. Flavia Hayun, 212 Harboway, Aventura. Um, I'm the mother of one of the kids in here. Um, I just want to put in, um, what is our situation here? My kids, this is practically their second home. We leave, we leave school, we go straight to the gym, we do our homework over there, and those kids, specific who are here, they're here for a reason. Those kids are on the special team, they practice a four hours a day, six days a week in that gym. They are training to go to the Olympics. I live my life over there. I, we put a lot into it. I leave that club at nine o'clock at night every day. I don't want to leave that area and see all that, that scene over there. 
and shame on him who open open his mouth to talk so clear about that when you have kids in here because in our uh, language that we were talking here they didn't have to understand that way that he put in here and we we would explain to them what it is so shame on him of open up that way so I just want to put that the situation that we are here as a parent the way that we see that and why we are fighting so hard for that because those kids in here they are there every day six days a week at least four hours a day and we leave there at night and we don't want to expose that to that to that scene over there that's all I have to say thank you, thank you. is there anybody else coming up to speak uh, is there any oh. mm -hmm. Hi, um, you all know me, at least most of you do. Uh, my name's Holly Cohen, I live in Keystone Point. Um, I'm not gonna rehash everything that was said. However, this meeting tonight, this hearing tonight is without authority. Um, it, we are a quasi, or we were a quasi-judicial board. The city had determined that they didn't want interference by the council board meetings and therefore, they, instead of being able to override everything we said and done as, as a uh, quasi-judicial board, you would have to go to court in order to appeal the decisions. The decision in August when it was made three to four, it was a decision. This is not a continuation. It was a decision. It was three to four decision that they could open up without alcohol. Now they're saying that it was a continuation. We got the transcripts. We got the recordings. It will come out that that's a total and complete lie. Furthermore, the attorney who, the city attorney that says that um, three of us or four of us have made the wrong decision. What, she's now judge and jury. She's uh, clairvoyant. She could read our minds. She could determine what we made our decision upon. My decision at that time was made upon the fact that there was a residential building there, 800 feet away from the strip club. It's within the four corners of the law in which I am able to say no. I do not want it while I was sitting on that Board of Adjustment, and I had the right to do it. So no one could tell me what I was thinking, and neither can this uh, city attorney. She is so prop out of order and so out of her league that that's not part of her job description, that's not part of her ability, and that's beyond her authority. And I will, uh, I concur with the woman that was just up here. Kevin Burns should be ashamed of himself. There was no necessity to say what, what this whole meeting was all about. These kids are here. They have a right to be here. They're in that neighborhood. Uh, and let, let's talk about, we're supposed to keep our attitudes and our viewpoints out that, that uh, we should only look at what we're doing. We're doing what? We're supposed to be giving a variance? Well, a variance is based upon the facts. The facts are there is a residential building there. That means we can say no. That means that when we had a 1,500 square foot, or I think it's square feet, but 1,500 feet away from that establishment, that means it should be 1,500 feet away from that establishment. The fact that it's 800 feet doesn't make it any more viable for this institution to be allowed in this location. So um, you want to look at the law? Look at the law. You want to know what you should be doing? You should be looking at the four corners of the law. There's 1,500 feet. If this is a school or if it's not a school, it doesn't matter. There's a residential building located within those 1,500 feet by half, 800 feet. That's not right. That's not a way to behave, and that's not what it should be done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Look Yes, thank you, board. Uh, my name is Gail Kornblum. I live at 12785 Maple Road. I understand the need for a variance when it's going to be a benefit to the city, but I don't understand how putting alcohol in a strip club in an industrial area is going to benefit our city. I can just, if, if I were looking for a place for manufacturing or warehouse space, I'd I look someplace else. 
because I'd be afraid of the possibilities of what could happen in that neighborhood. It may temporarily increase the workforce in the city or temporarily increase our tax uh, intake, but I don't think in the long run it's going to be a benefit in any way. I wish somebody could understand how it's, explain to me how it's going to benefit the city. Thank you. Yes, can you, Mr. Bass, like Mr. Mr. Bass to take some of my time. Oh, wow. I object. No, but no, I object. I, 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 I we, object. She, she's Mr. taking her time. Yeah. We, we can't no. do that, Steve. Please. Give your, give your information to someone. And there, there are certain material things that your staff advised me today that I are not yet on the record. I object. That, that okay. ought to be on the record. Mr. That are very material. I object. We, we, some order in, this, in these okay. proceedings. Please. Laurie Allen, 845 Northeast 119th Street, Biscayne Park. My business is, the address is 15161 Northeast 21st Avenue. I am directly across 151st Street from the proposed establishment. I am the executive director of South Florida Circus Art School. Although I do have school in my name, we do not have an academic program. We teach circus arts, gymnastics, and various and other after school and evening activities related to fitness. I, for one, have been on that street for over four years. That neighborhood is dark at night. We are there till approximately 9, 9.30 in the evening. There is no activity. It is abandoned, so to speak. I, when I first heard that the proposement was coming in, and then I attended the first meeting, and I heard that they would have police presence, it, it really assured me that there was going to be someone in the neighborhood. In my opinion, and as the closest neighbor here, if anyone who's expressed an opinion so far this evening, I consider that a benefit, that there is a police presence that is evident and open, that the lights are on, it's not a dark corner. As I state again, one more time, I am directly across the street from them, and I think that, have seen the drawings that were done at the first meeting, I think it will look beautiful, I think no one will have any idea of what's behind there, and it is a free will. If you want to go, go. I won't go, and another fact is that I w had to arrange to have a babysitter tonight for my 12-year-old daughter because I thought that this was not an appropriate place for her to hear this discussion. Thank you very much. Wait, you've, you've already spoken. No, we, I, can't, I can't. I, I understand Mr. Bass used up a lot of time. I used no. up less than three minutes. No, it's not I, a I matter can't of do that. that. No, it, it's one time. No, uh, it goes out of order. I've got to keep, okay. We've got a big meeting. Okay. We've got procedural issues, and I just can't do that. I'm well, sorry. Well, no, I, I can't. It's, it's, it's a legal argument. It's, no, a, it's no, a legal it issue matter. that wasn't raised before. It, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry. You're out of order. I've really got to keep order in the meeting. Good evening, Madam Chair. Members of the board, my name is Carol Prager. I reside at 2509 Northeast 135 Street, a neighborhood that's called Arch Creek East. I believe we are one of the closest neighborhoods to the petitioner. What I'm asking the board to do tonight is to consider the law. I want you to very carefully examine what is allowed under our laws. This is not a moral argument. This is about what is permitted within the confines of the law as we have it in North Miami. I am a mother. I am a grandmother. I am a former Cub Master of Cub Scouts. I am a former troop leader of Boy Scouts. I have been active in PTAs. I have been a civic activist for close to 15 years. I make it my business to know what's going on in my city. I don't have an opinion one way or the other in terms of what type of business this is. But I will say this. I want you to very seriously consider what you're voting on tonight. Listen very carefully to the recommendations of staff. Listen very carefully to the recommendations of your legal counsel. And under those guidelines, good people, you make your decision. If something is not correct in that decision under the recommendations of the staff or your city attorney, 
It will be upon the city of North Miami to deal with this. When you drive down Biscayne Boulevard to go to Aventura Mall, you need to pass Dean's Gold on the east of Biscayne Boulevard. You need to pass Swinging Richards on the west of Biscayne Boulevard. As you drive down Biscayne Boulevard south, you have to pass Secrets. These are adult establishments. I'll share with you a personal story that I had with my children who attended Miami Country Day. When we drove south on Biscayne Boulevard to go to school, my son once asked me, Mommy, what is that, party girls? Because the lettering on top of this, uh, in front of this building was kind of uh, written funny. It was secrets. I had to explain to my son what this establishment was. And then I told him it was up to adults to decide what they wanted to do. When you drive to the mall, you can't help but go past these establishments. You know they're there. If the, if the petitioner who is coming before you tonight is telling you that they're going to landscape this building or make the facade of this building look like something other than what goes on inside the building, you need to consider that too. This is a fact of life. This is the 21st century. People have the luxury of choice. We're not here to pass judgment on morals. We're here to make decisions based on the law. And if you've had other businesses come to this city and ask you for variances to serve alcohol because it would be in the best interest of their business to make as much money as possible, and adults choose to go into these establishments and consume alcohol, you can't hold this business to a different standard because you don't like what goes on inside those four walls. If you don't like what's going on there, do not go. If you need to explain what's going on there, it's upon you as a parent to discuss it with your child. I would, no, I would no sooner bring my children into this room tonight to have this discussion. Mm -hmm. This is a no-win situation when you bring children in. It really weighs heavy on my heart that this was a tactic that was used. I'm only asking you to please very carefully examine what your decision is here based on what your council is telling you and what your staff is telling you. Thank, Thank you. you. We have <coughs> Would you state your name I'm and Valentina address? Guerrero. I live in Northeast 29th Avenue. Thank you. I'm Vitalina Gregorovich. What is we your We want to become Olympic champions and we don't want to see junk men outside our gym. We go to Miami Gymnastics Dance Academy. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Annie Montgomery, 2082 Laura Lane. I didn't know we'd be back here in front of a board uh, discussing this item because the last meeting we were told by council, my council, our council, that this was a judicial hearing, quasi-judicial, and that it, the remedy was for the applicant to go <coughs> file a suit in civil court or in the court. And, and that had uh, up until September 15 to do so. It did not happen. Uh, our attorney, on two or three occasions, reminded everybody that it was a quidditial jury. It, it, excuse me. Anyway, quasi judicial, <laughs> right? <laughs> and he uh, emphasized that maybe three, four times. There are people on this board that have promoted this applicant, has spoke in favor at several meetings on this ap applicant, and that is very wrong. Our council person, my council person, asked who requested this meeting. And our city attorney, even though now we're being told that she approved it, said she did not know. 
at our council meeting. Well, I know who requested it. It was requested by our former mayor, is what I'm told, and it was approved by Maxine Calloway. That's what I've been told. That is also a disgrace. It's not the way this city should be run. We have people on this board that spoke that they go by the letter of the law. I hope tonight they realize that this meeting should not be held. It should have gone to court. Our applicants should have applied or filed, but they failed to do so. Because I guess they had some conversation with some people. So I'm very disturbed that this has taken place. I want to put on the record that I was accused of finding this school by a friend. I was accused of bringing the people, the children here tonight by a friend. And that's very upsetting because I did not do that. I did not find the school. <coughs> we are, had, I heard somebody speaking that they are very happy, they are, they're very ple pleasantly surprised that they will have police protection. They will have police protection for 90 days. The first 90 days, they'll have police protection, and I don't think it'll be for their protection. I don't know for whose, but the police will be there for 90 days. And then the city will make a determination if we need police more. So we have a whole new board here in this, which really was haired. It should not be haired tonight. It should have been finished. And I'm very surprised at our council and our staff going along with this. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tracy Haldemuth. I'm a resident at 2090 Northeast 124th Street, but I also own a business. Ms. Helmos, did you take the oath? I noticed you came in no. a little bit late. So Can let you me swear, do you swear okay. or affirm that the testimony you provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, are you saying you can't hear me, Annie? I can hear you. I knew that was coming. My business is on at 1897 Northeast 146th Street. I provide <coughs> services for um, physically and mentally challenged children, um, mostly of the lower socioeconomic. And a lot of my parents come by bus or walk to my office off of Biscayne Boulevard, which will be a couple of blocks away from this new business that I have come to find out is is coming to our city. Um, as you can tell by my tone, I'm not for it. I'm very upset. I find that it's really interesting that not only do we have enough crime in the um, complex and the, the, the buildings behind my office, which are adjacent to this property, I just find it very odd that there's schools, there's there, these apartment buildings, there's offices like mine, all within like a block and a half of this business, which I don't believe belongs in our city. But that's my personal opinion. I was also asked, um, uh, it was a meeting last night, and I was led to believe that as per our city's legal staff, if a variance is denied, the record is a vote itself. No supplemental order of resolutions sh should be issued. That was number one. Um, per staff, the newly appointed members of this board were not given copies of the 8-15-2012 transcript or a DVD of that hearing. Therefore, they should not be able to vote on that issue tonight. And the third issue is because the board member spoke as an a, a board member spoke as an advocate for the strip club applicant at an August 15th meeting, he should not he is not impartial and should be recu recused from voting tonight. That's but Michael, that's Michael McDermott. Okay. Oh, I've, oh, Michael McDermott. I I'm. I've been a, mem a resident of the city since 1971. I went to Bryan Elementary in North Miami Middle and Senior High. And I stopped coming to the meetings of the city because I felt like I was never being heard. And I'm encouraged again to open my big mouth, which I've been told is very big by certain neighbors. 
but I'm, I'm truly concerned of where this where the city is going and what we're offering when I know there are chil there are a ton of children in those buildings behind my office that are going to be exposed to God knows what kind of element and we know what what strip clubs bring and you know maybe if I had a different body type I'd be more open to it but it's just really something I don't think as a, as a city resident and, in a, and a business owner in that really really close vicinity is something that we should be even we shouldn't even be entertaining this it's just not what we want and I apologize for offending anybody but that's what I do thank you